All righty. Good morning, everybody. Happy uh, and healthy Wednesday. I'm Jim Benton from Chorus.ai. I'm joined here with Brian Remington. Hey, Brian, how are you doing today? Hey, Jim, I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. I appreciate it. And uh, just before we get in, I think the spirit of what we're trying to achieve, you know, I've been, we have this remarkable data right now. Uh, and I know that company leaders everywhere are feeling uncomfortable and really wanting to understand what's happening in the field. I, I do. I'm sure you do, and we all do. Um, and so I've got this team of researchers across multiple offices in Canada and Tel Aviv who are just jamming away and looking to bring insights to help us make better decisions right now. And so I'm excited to have you share, you know, what you're doing at Schedulo and how you're thinking about, you know, both the SDRs and just the overall, you know, sales market. But why don't I start with some insights and then I'll and I'll jump in and we'll we'll have some fun together. How's that sound? Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. So why don't we jump in here? So yesterday, uh, and Brian, from your benefit, just a quick recap. You know, yesterday I was sharing with everybody and looking at how COVID-19 is affecting the productivity of revenue teams everywhere, that overall, I was just shocked. We're seeing across the board up and through last week that there's only been a 10% decrease in productivity of number of meetings held per week. Uh, and secondly, on the verticals, we went through this yesterday, certain categories are doing much better than others. Uh, around the collaboration, around infrastructure and security, and others in the HR tech and hospitality. We're really seeing some real challenges and, and uh, trying to be creative here. I'm curious, um, before we get into today's stat, what you're seeing on your side in terms of just productivity. Yeah, it's a great question. I think the, the initial anxiety kicked in pretty quickly uh, early last week, and people were nervous about, you know, should I call? Is it appropriate? You know what is this new this new world we live in, um, and then very quickly realized that you know what this time did was really double clicked or validated the process yep. that we had in place. It is uberly more important now to truly know who you're calling, what they're going through, what that persona is, what they do for a living, um, as well as you know this this word empathy keeps getting thrown around a lot, which I think it's sure. and I'm not downplaying it by any means but I think it's incredibly important. Um, but I kind of put that empathy in the place of how people were doing personalization in the past. Um, you know, I think um, Jeremy Donovan in a presentation said, you know, in 2019, personalization became a gimmick. And too quickly, people were jumping into something they pulled from a profile and then going right into their pitch, right? There was no authenticity. It reminded me of that old um, that old commercial where it was like, hey, how are you today? The person's like, not well. And they're like, that's great. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's listening. It's those things. So we, we've saw, we've seen about a 10% drop to your point. Okay, that's right. And so you're on the workforce management side. How is that? Yeah. How, how are you guys navigating this yourselves? Yeah, um, yeah, really great question. So our like kind of tip of the spear when it comes to verticals is healthcare. And even on the home, home health and post-acute side. So we really had to be careful. And even at one point last week, kind of pulled off a little bit from um, our messaging. Uh, but what we realized very quickly is there are people in crisis right now. There just are um, yeah. that don't have time, but there are others that have their heads down that are looking for ways to make sure that they can deal with the overflow of requests. So while we are changing our messaging to be, you know, to, to open with, we understand the reality, but yeah. let me tell you exactly why I'm reaching out to you and why I think we can be of value in this crazy, insane time. I so it's being, yeah, empathetic, but get yeah. practical and relevant quickly. Yeah. But also know that our CTA is no longer important, nor, nor, nor was it going in to be completely honest, but it's a, uh, when, you know, we're here to keep your business moving forward. We are here to help you when the time makes the most sense. And here's the information that we, why, why we think we can be a, a catalyst for you moving forward. That's uh, super impressive. I want to dig a little bit more into that. As we look at the data, our team pulled this uh, yesterday. So this is looking at specifically, you know, as we look at the cases in the U.S. rise, unfortunately, and I know our friends out in New York and the East Coast are really going through a tough time right now. Yeah. We also look at how is COVID-19 showing up in the sales calls, in the meetings specifically. And it's interesting looking at the trend, you know, just over the last few weeks. I mean, just February 23rd, only 8% of the meetings had some mention of some type of either COVID or coronavirus in it. It jumped to 29%. Even as of March 8th, it was only 63%. And 
And as of last week, we were at 98% of the calls wow. had a you know, COVID-19 mention. So basically it's growing 2.5X per week. And specifically when we look at you know, how this is impacting just our, our sales community and in the spirit of how we solve problems, we know that in the first 10 minutes, you know, 50% of the mentions happen there and that it's primarily initiated by the sales reps. And so one of the observations I had looking at this is just, what are we all doing to train our team? You know, what's the, what is the message we want our team out there? We know we're going to talk about this, but is it that the sky's falling and we're all, you know, hunkered down and I don't know where I am right now and it's just crazy or a way, as you just described, to stay focused on solving problems and helping people right now? So could you share a little bit like how you think about the messaging and how you've, you said you've shifted sort of the, the language. Tell us more. Yeah, um, I think it goes back and I'm forget, forgetting which one of the 19 methodologies in my career that this came from, but it's, you know, um, you know we're, we're not in, our profession is not here to pitch our platform or our solution. Our job is to fix and provide answers to the problems that our clients have. And I think very quickly, in some cases, and I, you know, I think we can be using pain um, too quickly and almost trying to go in with our agenda to say, okay, I'm going to use COVID-19 to, to show that I'm empathetic, to show that there's urgency here, yep. instead of just listening, right? Instead of just listening and taking the direction from our clientele and our customers and our prospects and taking that narrative and continuing with it and figuring out how we can fix it. I yeah. think, you know, there's a way to show empathy without very quickly bringing up the negative emotion that everybody's going through right now. Like, I would almost feel like you'd want to come in and try to be as positive as possible, but real, make them realize. And, you know, it brings me back to, you know, many of like the doctor's appointments I've had. What I don't want is the doctor to come in with a frown and talk about yeah. how shitty things are and how overweight I am. Um, right? But I want, I want that person, he or she to listen to me and then talk about how we can make it better. Yeah. You know, understand what I'm trying to do. And as a business, that's what we want to know. Like, are you, are you trying to manage an ever increasing lack of customer satisfaction and, and the customer experience because of the volumes? Or are you trying to just get through this and keep your business open? Because yeah. that completely changes the narrative that I want my team, you know, pro providing for these individuals. Oh. Um, one is compassionate. One is empathetic. We had a, uh... As you know, I joined just a week ago, and so I've been getting yeah. to know the teams and just living on, on Zoom uh, and meeting all the different groups in small pockets. So I was with our BDR team or a group of our yeah. BDRs last week, and it's funny, we kicked off the call, and uh, one of the professional, uh, one of the, the team members out of Boston said, oh, I just bungled that call. And I said, what do you mean by, just real quick, what, what does bungled mean? He goes, <laughs> the person said to me, are you really calling right now to pitch me something? And it, you know, that's a tough thing to hear yeah. uh, for any of us to hear. I, I don't love that message either. Um, and so we did a role play real quick. I was like, well, let's just try this out. Because in my entire career, I've only worked on products that I think solve real problems. Otherwise, I'd just go to get a job at LinkedIn and call it a day. <laughs> and, you know, back at ClearSide, we felt the same way that we were solving yeah. problems. And so we did the role play. And I think the, the, our, our message was, look, let's be real. We're all, we all are scared. And we got kids running around and you know, the vegetables are running out and there's all the little things that we deal with outside of the work mode. But I think if we're solving real problems, we can pause people and say, look, this isn't a drip email. This isn't automated. And of the 35 million businesses, I'm calling you because I think I can help you. I really think I can help you have the best data to make a decision. I'm curious, like, how are you facing that on your side where people are saying, look, are we really trying to book meetings right now? Uh, it's a really fantastic question. Because <laughs> especially, especially with young professionals, right? The first thing you have to say is, hey, it, you know, it's not your fault. You did nothing wrong, yeah. right? <laughs> um, hoping, hoping that your messaging is clear. But it's, it's very hard for them to make that transition, to go from someone asking that question to be able to you know, be, be that physician and be that person that says, hey, I completely understand where you are right now. And that's actually why I am calling. You know, because we do bring expertise, we are focused and we are a healthcare focused organization that's helping our customers through this time by, able, by being able to simplify the complexity of how they're scheduling and assigning jobs because your customers need you. Yeah. And yeah, 
Yeah, Brian, I was watching it, a, a, a repeat of Seth Meyers on The Tonight Show that was three weeks ago. And it looked okay. so out of place. I mean, yeah. uh, it's out of place in terms of what he was talking about. I'm curious if mm -hmm. your sequences have the same feeling. Are we all, if you look at the sequences that we have in our outreaches and sales lofts of the world, um, is that an area that you've had to jump into? Do you feel like they're still holding up right now or, or do we need to change the tone in those? We, imme we immediately paused early last week. Okay and went through and, you know, I, I, I'm hoping we went through all the ones that were um, in flight and paused a few of them that were a little more provocative in their messaging, mm -hmm. um, appropriate, but provocative. We felt that that wasn't the right thing to do right now. Um, the other one was anything that was really driven on, you know, super positivity about, hey, let's get a demo, let's get time in front of you. We'd love to come in and bring, you know, bring coffee or buy your lunch for you. Any yeah. of those that didn't really work for us, uh, Sendoso right now is, uh, is on pause. Um, but we found that others too were a little more directed at the pain, a little more directed at, uh, you know, the reason for my message is because yeah. of who you are, what you do, and what we're doing for customers just like you to be able to create operational efficiency and more importantly, increase their customer experience. So we're starting there. A 17 touch sequence is not appropriate right now. Mm. It's just not, right? Yeah. Give people three or four very relevant, very direct messages on how we can help and then pause. Yeah. And then it's, come back with something similar. It's interesting. I mean, I just think that's the spirit of today that we're all going through. There's a little bit of uh, simplicity. Yeah. Um, and look, I think that the, the the magic of what we've all created, we will get back to very quickly. I look at my, I was going to bed last night, my wife talking about how it is simple right now. I mean, it's just, there's nowhere to go. There's no plans. And there, there's a, it, it's delightful in a small way, but I'm just starting to get that cabin fever. And I think even in sales, I wonder if we're just going to start to to yearn for kind of like, how do we get more efficiency, more productive? But it's, to your point, it's simple. We're reaching out in a really authentic yeah. way right now. Yeah. In terms of no-shows, are you seeing an increase of people saying, hey, look, let's reschedule or, or no-shows? And how's that impacting you? Yeah, well, we've been very lucky. So, uh, of course, we had a few, um, a few reschedules, yeah. um, indefinite reschedules, I would call them as well. Okay. Um, no, no ghosting whatsoever, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, one or two cancellations. But, the, again, these are at the um, really the tip of um, – the healthcare industry that are just scrambling right now or companies that don't know if they'll be viable in two no. months. Um, but ironically, we've seen the opposite in other areas. So for instance, traffic management, like, traffic management, thank, thank you. Like, yes, call us. Like while the streets are a little bit bare, we now have opportunities to do things we've never thought we'd be able to do. And what you do is exactly what we need coming out of this because our, the demand is going to be so high. So we really took a step back and started looking at, okay, what are the, flourish is not the word, but what are the industries and the verticals that are looking at this as like an opportunity to reset, right? Rebuild yeah. and come out stronger than they actually were. And we're starting to see a lot of success there as well as still a little bit slower on the other pieces. And again, you can't get away from healthcare, but yeah. uh, you know, like retail, hospitality, other things like that, like they want to talk right now. The ones that are, again, still viable and they'll, they'll be around, but uh, they want to yeah. know how they can be better coming out of this because keeping their customers is, I'm starting to hear, like one of their number one concerns coming yeah. out of this yeah. because yeah. of the, the competition is going to be rampant. Well, it's interesting. I, I look at my own productivity, just being at home with zero distractions. I mean, in a spirit of uh, work-wise, once you're, once you're working yeah. right but uh, I find that I, I feel very productive right now. Maybe it's because I'm new. I find that I can engage the you know, customers and partners in a, in a more efficient way. How, how are you personally doing on the work at home front? It's a really great question. I think if you ask my wife, she would give you a completely different answer. <laughs> um, I'm working more. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I can say very clearly, um, it's I'm, I'm doing long days, but I'm getting a lot done. I think the biggest thing, and I'm sure you've heard this from other people, the biggest thing coming out of this is just human connectivity. I mean, I have never had these kind of personal conversations with my team, with my peers. Um, you know, yesterday we had actually Beck join us on my team huddle and the whole team huddle was a just show and tell, right? We just pulled people in and said, hey, bring pictures, wear something cool and tell us a little yeah. bit about what it means to you. And it was, it was a lot of fun, but from a work standpoint, um, you know, 
I am working a lot, but at the same time, I always go to bed thinking, what did I not do? Who's out there that needs me to be yeah. doing something right now? And how am I utilizing that time? But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a work from home guy. I'm a people guy. So that's the other piece. Like, <laughs> yeah, the human connectivity, when you mentioned that, you'd think that right now people would say it the other way, that you'd be lacking and yearning for it. And you just said it's the opposite. And I, I've heard that as we've got different offices across the, the, the planet. Uh, they've said we feel closer to the company than we've ever felt. I think in some ways we've democratized mm -hmm. location. Everyone's a click away. And it's and, and we're up earlier because we're not commuting. So it's easy to be talking to Tel Aviv at you know 7 a.m. and yeah. not having it disrupt a day. So it's a it's a funny comment that you have. Hey, one final comment. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. you know uh, my I think my brother, is that right? Yes. I know I've known Andy for, for many, many years. And ironically, Andy was um, hired to backfill me at salesforce.com where he's oh, been for a long time now. Um, when I went over to LinkedIn to uh, you know help kick off the sales <clears throat> sales solutions business. So um, right. great guy um, in my communication with him though, he wanted me to remind you that he'll always be taller. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well look, on Zoom we're all the same height. I love that line, that is <laughs> such a beautiful line. Uh, nice, well I'm glad you met Andy, awesome guy. Shout out to yeah. Andy Benton here. Yes. Um, Brian, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. There's one last oh, thing pleasure. we're doing. We're gonna, we're gonna yeah. log a quick poll for everybody here that is online, we got a good little crew here. And the question is just for everybody out listening, how, is, uh, how has your team's productivity been over the past week? Yesterday we did this and I was expecting, uh, we were looking at um, pipeline and, and different aspects and thinking it'd be down a lot. And once again, I'm looking at the stats coming in, you know, uh, we are tied, let's see, 50% says slightly up, 38% uh, slightly down, 6%, you know, significantly up. Uh, now at the data and 61% is slightly up. So how is your team's productivity? Wow. Isn't, that, isn't that just remarkable given what we're all thinking about at home? So uh, really impressive and uh, cool. I'm gonna end that poll. And on that note, I'll just quick shout out to everyone. If you're looking to get the intelligence we've shown here today, go to course.ai. We've just launched a free starter edition for enterprises. Um, it ties into our native Zoom integration and happy to get people started as quick as possible. Brian, have a great Wednesday and you thanks well. again for joining us. Cheers. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right, bye, bye, everybody. Bye.